No doggies. Hey guys. Just prepping. Thanks for joining tonight.
Hello, everybody. I want to welcome you to Compass Games Live. It's episode 61. You're probably wondering why the different camera angle tonight. Uh, camera was actually working fine this morning as it always has, but when I switched to uh, my normal uh, self here, it has the wiggles. It's trying to autofocus on me. I may have uh, I may have hit a wrong button by accident, and I have got no time to troubleshoot it. So if it's okay with you guys so you don't uh, get dizzy on me, I'm going to switch to... Uh, where all my unplayed games are, as somebody said <laughs> in the audience. Yes, lots of uh, SPI games mainly on the shelf here in the office. And yeah, well, I'm, I apologize if I'm not facing you for the for the broadcast tonight. But again, it's a pleasure to have you here. So let's go ahead and uh, let's get right into it and get started because we do have several updates for you today before we get to our uh, pre-order announcement. So let me just zoom in here just ever so slightly, a little bit bigger here. So first of all, yes, Paper Wars 98 Alma, you've started receiving it. So thanks to those that uh, subscribe to Paper Wars magazine. And uh, thanks for everybody for also posting uh, some great uh, pictures of the game. So it's wonderful to see it. Uh, I've noticed it a lot on Facebook, for example, under the Compass Games Enthusiast group. So hope you're enjoying Paper Wars. We just talked with Bill uh, Thomas last week during the town hall, and we're really pleased with how Paper Wars has really shaped up under the leadership of Ty Bamba. And uh, also we have Paul helping do the graphics on uh, the magazine now. And uh, yeah, we're just really pleased with how it's turned out. Hope you enjoy uh, Alma. Again, it's uh, it's the second game in a series we had. I think it was Paper Wars 93 that also uh, had a game uh, using the same system. But uh, let's talk a little bit about the schedule update. So I've updated the schedule earlier today. Um, first of all, we have Defending America will be our uh, first release for August. It's on August 9th. We have to push it out just a few days. We'll talk a little bit more about Defending America here in a moment. Uh, and then uh, we did have some adjustments. So we did want to get a few things into the schedule for August. You'll see the update here. So on the left column, we're just focusing on the left column. So Blue Water Navy restock and Enemy Action Ardennes restock. Those are both going to be uh, starting the ship on the 12th of August. So just a few days after Defending America. Um, you can, uh, you'll can you start receiving those games if you're looking uh, to receive one now that it's getting restocked. So restock basically means there's no changes to the game. We're not updating anything as far as the maps, the rules, charts, tables, anything like that. It's literally the same game. The only slight difference may be is if we had to reprint counters, we do have a new counter supplier we're using, which you may have noticed with Paper Wars or with NATO, where you get the shrink wrap counters, little thicker counters. So that would be the one difference, and which we can't control. It's just to get those counters restocked. It's now through a, which uh, which I think everybody's hopefully happy about. It's with a new supplier for the counters, and everybody seems to love the counters uh, that we now provide standard, since uh, that's the feedback we got a few months back to improve the counters. Uh, and then we're rounding out the schedule for August with what we had earlier, which is going to be the War Pacific, and yet again, another uh, restock item. Item, which is the war Europe. So both of those games will be end of August. As a result of just throwing all those things together for August, we just pushed out just slightly Granada. Granada was originally scheduled for August, but we've got a full lineup for August. So we're going to get that uh, game out first in September. Um, looking forward to getting that game out. And also there's been... Uh, there's been uh, people anxiously waiting to see Kharkov Battles released. So that we'll be releasing Kharkov Battles in September as well. As Bill mentions during his town hall, he likes to try to do two new releases per month. So if you look at uh, September, you see it's those, it's Granada, it's Kharkov Battles. Those are the two games. We might slip in a reprint or perhaps a Paper Wars uh, doesn't count towards that two new game count. So we've just got those two for September just to stay true to that uh, cadence of release. Uh, so that basically means Russian Campaign is now in October to stick to the two new releases per month. So we're looking at Russian Campaign and Imperial Top for October, as you can see on the schedule here. So as always, though, things are can always change, just like things change in this schedule with the restocking items, adding Blue Water Navy and Enemy Action Ardennes. That was not there. Uh, so that's a recent addition. And then Bill's always looking to fine-tune the release schedule. And I believe he, he did a poll question last week during our town hall um, as well, just to see what game you would like to see next out of a, 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 out of three different uh, game choices that he had proposed. So that's a little bit about the schedule. I'm going to be brave here, and excuse me, but I feel like I'm being rude if I don't 
have a chance to sort of face you a little bit here, even though the, the camera is going to freak out a little bit. But uh, just to let you know, uh, we also have our newsletter that went out uh, yesterday. So of course, the Paper Wars, uh, the new release, which shows the map and the counters here, as you can see, uh, people are receiving it now by Thai Bomb. I did want to mention, and yes, it was uh, issue 93 of Paper Wars, the Walgram. Uh, Walgram release was the first uh, installment of this game system, which uh, we got some good feedback on. So we hope you uh, enjoy the same system under the Battle of Alma in Paper Wars. Uh, as uh, announced uh, two weeks ago, we did a pre-order announcement for uh, Schnellboats. So here you can see uh, that announcement here as a reminder for Schnellboats, which you can pre-order now. Defending America, it's done really well. So thanks to everybody. Uh, it's only got 38 hours left, but we actually broke the $10,000 uh, barrier, if you want to call it a barrier, or maybe a milestone of sorts. So we're really happy with the result of Defending America. And again, the Kickstarter is a way for us really to get the word out to reach people that otherwise might just not go to the website or follow Hobby News very closely, especially around what Compass Games is doing for releases. So uh, the Kickstarter helps get the word out. We also put the rule booklet there for you to check out the rules. So we try to throw in some extra things. Obviously, the video is an unboxing video, which you can play. But thank Thank you all so much for if you pre-ordered the game perfect you don't have to do anything but also to the 100 plus people that um, pre uh, did the kickstarter pledge uh, we really obviously appreciate that as well so just wanted to put in a word to thank everybody for that uh, boy nato's just been doing like gangbusters so as uh, bill mentioned uh, in our uh, town hall last week it's really going to be our top seller i think maybe just stellar horizons has got a leg up on it being a big science fiction genre game obviously has a huge following science fiction and a bigger audience but boy nato has been doing um, incredible gangbusters really thanks to the community support uh, the content contributors out there doing interviews with Bruce Maxwell, of course, Bruce Maxwell himself and all the project team members have just done a phenomenal job with NATO. We'll talk a little bit more about NATO here in a moment. So again, I've just gone through the lineup of games. Of course, the newsletter provides that as well for August. So you'll see here everything I've just uh, talked about, Defending America, Blue Water Navy, and Enemy Action Ardennes restock with those dates in August 12th, and then ending the month with uh, Pacific and the war europe and again the, both those games can be combined for a master grand uh both fronts uh war as far as pacific and european fronts so you can actually combine both games uh, if if you if you want to go for that um want to also do a shout out to the compass games enthusiast page up to 825 members or 840 members i stand corrected it's growing every day uh, just a reminder if you're on facebook if you are uh, on facebook with an account if you click on the invite button it will pull up your uh, friends list and you can go ahead and invite people to join uh, compass games enthusiast group i noticed the war gamer group had a big spike in new members and it turned out it was because they asked people to hit that invite button and that means you're inviting all your friends that have an interest in the hobby. They might not be aware about the Compass Games Enthusiast Group. We think it's a great place to land to learn more about uh, Compass Games and what everybody's playing. Um, so again, just want to put, give a shout out to uh, Compass Games Enthusiast Group. We'll have the two uh, moderators, administrators of the group. We'll have them on uh, in a future session of Compass Games Live. What I'd like to do now is I want to bring in uh, Maurice Fitzgerald uh, in to talk a little bit with us tonight. Uh, to do a recap of uh, of uh, what we had for the Learn to Play session. So uh, let's bring Mo in. How you doing, Mo? Oh, I don't hear you. I muted you. Let me make sure you're unmuted. Let's We're try good. again. There we go. <laughs> We're good now. So uh, there you are. Great to have you back again. We'll just focus in on you here for a second. So give a little bit of a background, if you, if you could, of what the Learn to Play session is all about. Sure. The uh, Learn to Play, if you haven't already heard about it, is uh, really about getting designers or people who know the game really well to come in and teach their game uh, or teach the game that they know real well so that way people who've not played or don't have as good an understanding of the game will get a better understanding of the mechanics and the overall design itself last night uh, the first one was uh, blue water navy with uh, Stuart tongue and last night was as you've got up on the screen there was nato with bruce maxwell and i think it was really fantastic he went over the first turn of the strategic surprise scenario and uh you know a People may say, yeah, only one turn. Well, you saw a lot in that first turn. And it yeah. went for about an hour, 
a little about an hour, an hour and 15. It would have been and less time good... if I hadn't interrupted it by having a live mic. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I get these Zoom call meetings and I, I join with the mic auto muted. So I jumped into Discord, which by the way, this is what it looks like. If people are wondering what Discord looks like, what Mo's uh, organized, you can see here on the left, all the members that joined at one point, this was early on, about 20 plus members. And then off to the right, you can see their avatars. And then off, obviously center is the actual tutorial taking place with uh, Bruce uh, going through it. So uh, yeah, I'm just apologize for uh, hearing about my dinner plans with my son. While I was getting because <laughs> well, I had a hot mic. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was funny. Uh, anybody who's in the uh, learn and play will know what we were talking about. Those who weren't, don't worry about it. I've edited it out because uh, to answer the one question that everybody's been asking in the chat, yes, I have recorded it and I'm editing it. And once that's ready, I'll post it up and I'll announce it so that way everybody can see it and watch and, and get a feel for what it was uh, that was taught in the learn to play. And you'll learn a lot of things too, because Bruce is a great presenter of his game. He's uh, really passionate about it and he knows it so well, and he's really, really good at teaching it and presenting it to others. So uh, I think it's well worth, it's going to be well worth the time watching it. Yeah. And kudos to you, like Craig says on YouTube, thanks for joining us, Craig. So absolutely. Um, I know, I know it's a big effort behind the scenes. You're, you're putting it together, testing the systems, making sure it works, making sure we can do a recording of it. A lot of moving parts involved to do this. And uh, so hats off to you. Um, you know, the community's really come together and you're doing great things. So thanks so much for, uh, for putting that together. So I guess uh, we'll be announcing later the, uh, what we might be doing for next month. Uh, it might be an mm -hmm. oldie, I think. Uh, I don't know yeah. if you want to give it a hint of what might be coming, what you're thinking about. Feel free yeah. to share. And we like. may be doing something uh, modern, but not uh, exactly a little bit earlier, uh, shall we say, than uh, the NATO time frame, but not World War II either uh, is what we're looking at. So <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll announce it here soon uh, once we get everything firmed up. But uh, I think it'll be interesting, uh, another interesting game that people will really enjoy. Well, thanks so much again. And, like, you know, you're getting a lot of kudos all, all the way around. Uh, Well-deserved. Uh, keep it up. It's it's going great. And uh, we'll always look for people's feedback like you do. I know you're open for feedback, how to sure. how to improve it. But I really enjoyed uh, watching the session last night. I'll look forward to uh, the recording. God willing, there's an edit tool to take out my live mic. For, <laughs> take out the sound somehow. Uh, I might. I might. I can replay it now for. I can start. Somewhere. I can start yelling right now for people if they want a, sort of a rewind. But no, I don't. I don't think we'll do that. But uh, no, hats hats off to you and and what uh, Andrew says in Australia. Awesome, awesome, awesome work. <laughs> and uh, keep it keep it going, as they say. Keep it well, going, and and uh, we'll look forward to uh, having you again next month. Sure. Yeah. You know, uh, I, maybe I'll leave it in there. A little Easter eggs. We like having our Easter egg. Oh, it's the other way. Uh, the other shoulder, I should say, is there's uh, Easter Applebee's. eggs here. Oh, the uh, oh the possum. <laughs> oh the oh my gosh. I don't want to. We're gonna save that for the town hall. I'm gonna try. Or in other words, I'm trying to escape the whole possum thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I had a feeling that was gonna be bad, and it actually was much worse than I thought. So oh, that, that will have away. a life of its own. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, unbelievable, unbelievable. Well, Mo, awesome job, and uh, Bruce Maxwell. Uh, somebody, I think somebody said here, uh, Bruce has been. Uh, uh, definitely making the rounds, and I believe yes, it's true that we can say that he is committed to be on Oprah on Friday. So this is a this is a first uh, having a compass designer on the Oprah Winfrey show. Well, uh, if you talking, want to game, go to the Oprah show because you know Oprah is you get a NATO, you get a NATO, hey, you all get a NATO. NATO. It's like our end of year uh, broadcast, the town hall we do. It's just exactly. like that. So uh, we're looking forward to the Oprah broadcast for sure. Yeah, definitely. No, it's a lot of fun with the LTP, and I really appreciate all the feedback from everybody. And if you have any more, reach out to me on Discord and, uh, you know, give me any feedback you have to make the program even better. Awesome work. Thanks again, Mo. Thanks for Thanks. joining See us tonight. Guys. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye. All righty. So I'm going to stick to this camera angle mode for a while. So uh, what I'd like to do really quickly was we pretty much went through the schedule updates for Compass. A few changes there, as I mentioned. We'll have a bigger update from Bill Thomas next week. But what I'd like to do now is uh, get into what everybody is, is, is definitely here for, and that's for our uh, pre-order uh, game announcement. Uh, so uh, without further ado, let me uh, get the screen ready here and uh, show you what we have. So I'm just preparing it here for everybody as I go there. 
and uh, we'll talk a little bit. You know, we're going to do this a little bit differently tonight. So besides the weird camera angle, which I hope is not too annoying for you all, uh, we are going to be uh, uh, doing some uh, special things around the troubles. So again, really excited. Boy, I, I'd say of uh, most pre-orders, this is probably the one pre-order I've had the most questions on about when are we going to do the pre-order announcement for this game. So a lot of people know the game quite well because uh, the designer Hugh O'Donnell has done quite a few um, reviews, interviews, or series articles. I believe the Players Aid had some early uh, articles on the game before the game got refined. So what I'd like to do with you is something different. And this is something that has been done before. Uh, when we did Operation Storm 333 with Christopher Davis, uh, you know, the Kabul, Afghanistan, I believe it was 79. Uh, it's one of those things where I'm not sure, uh, and I can say, speaking for myself, don't have a lot of uh, insider information about, uh, you know, what that topic is exactly about or what it's encompassing. So I have two things I'd like to do with you tonight. First, I'd like to give you a quick uh, uh, primer on the background to the troubles. It's gonna be about four minutes. It's gonna run for four minutes, just to give you the background, much like we did for Operation Storm 333. I think that will set the stage. And then since the designer is based in Europe, we did a pre-recorded session uh, earlier today when my camera worked without auto adjusting like it's doing. So I will also follow it up with the interview and then we'll look at the pre-order page in detail after that is done so if that sounds good to you now is a great time to grab a coffee grab a drink whatever you like as i have my iced tea here and let's begin with uh, again let's begin with a primer to know a little bit more about the troubles and the history behind it and this will run a little over four minutes then we'll be back <music> It's a dark period in Ireland's history, a conflict which saw over 3,600 people killed and countless more injured in a territorial struggle for Northern Ireland. The Troubles are a conflict which ravaged Northern Ireland for 30 years, with the effects still being felt years after its conclusion. The ongoing conflict is an important part of Belfast's history and identity. The conflict occurred as a response of a Unionist Protestant majority wanting to stay within the United Kingdom and a Catholic Republican minority fighting to join the Republic of Ireland. The Troubles began in 1968 with a civil rights movement in an attempt to shift the long-running Unionist presence in Ireland's politics. The clash between the two groups became serious enough for British troops to be sent in to ease tensions, and thus the Troubles and a long period of conflict began. In 1972, tensions came to a head in what is now known as Bloody Sunday. Thirteen Northern Irish Catholic protesters were killed and 17 wounded when British troops opened fire in an attempt to seize the protest. Bloody Sunday brought worldwide attention to the Troubles. The same year, just months later, saw the Irish Republican Army setting off 19 bombs across Belfast, killing nine people. Belfast and Northern Ireland's economy suffered as a result of the conflict due to violence and political instability. The tourism and entertainment industry suffered heavily as Belfast and Northern Ireland became synonymous with violence and instability. Unemployment and economic issues proved to create more tensions in Ireland and fueled the conflict. Professor of Green Political Economy at Queen's University Belfast, John Barry, discusses the Troubles' involvement in slowing the development of Belfast. We should judge whether or not we're becoming more sustainable by how less violent we are. You've got two competing dynamics. On the one hand, there's a small industry, partly tourist related, to do with the conflict. On the downside, we haven't completely solved our conflict. This can attract negative publicity. This can cause real economic um, hardship because we spend a lot of money on policing. So the millions of pounds we spend on policing orange parades or union flag protests, well, that money is not going elsewhere. Mm. Throughout the 70s, 80s and 90s, conflicts and killings continued in Northern Ireland until peace talks and ceasefire began in 1996, sowing the seeds for the conclusion of a dark period in Irish history. Belfast chaplain Chris Bennett recalls growing up through the Troubles and how Belfast is transforming since its conclusion. And I'm the prime example. I'm the generation of people who... I was born in 1975, so the Troubles started in 69. So I don't remember... Obviously, I wasn't there when, when they started. I probably would say that I never probably really understood what they were all about. You don't really kind of go back to the root of, of figuring out why, why did they start. You just live with this kind of, oh, well, this is the way that, that yeah. it is. You have to 
be searched by security guards going into the shop. You have to, uh, the police have to look under your car when you park it because, you know, they were always checking for bombs and stuff. And that was just norm normality in the 70s and 80s. The troubles came to a conclusion in 1998 with the Good Friday Agreement. On Friday, April 10th, the concerned parties agreed on peace amongst Northern Ireland and the United Kingdom and the Republic of Ireland. The agreement saw the Republic of Ireland dropping their constitutional claim over the six counties that form Northern Ireland. A proposal was also brought forward to decommission paramilitary weapons and the early release of paramilitary prisoners. A referendum was held in Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland to ratify the proposals, in which the majority voted in favour of the agreement. While conflicts have occurred after the Good Friday Agreement, Northern Ireland is continuing to grow economically and socially to become a peaceful place for Irish nationals to be proud of and for tourists to explore the rich culture that Ireland has to offer. In 2016, Northern Ireland voted with a majority to stay within the European Union during the Brexit vote. This historic vote could lead to the next evolution of the battle for Irish independence. Discussions are brewing over the possibility of Northern Ireland furthering their relationship with the EU by leaving the United Kingdom. Okay, so I hope again, thank you uh, for your patience and your indulgence. I, I Again, like we did for Operation Storm uh, 333 regarding uh, Kabul and Afghanistan, I really want to provide some context, some background to the treatment of what's being simulated uh, and what's being studied. So there's a lot of good uh, primers out there on YouTube. Um, Hugh O'Donnell, the designer, gave me a few options to pick from. I went with the one that was the shortest in duration. So, and and obviously we don't know, you know, if there's a certain slant to the topic, you know, we don't know. We're just basically want to give you something to give you some uh, more flavor about what is uh, being covered uh, in this game. And towards that end, what I'd like to do now is we do have our pre-recorded interview with Hugh O'Donnell. Again, he's based out of Europe. Uh, he simply uh, couldn't be here live uh, to do this live. It would have been middle of the morning, uh, early morning hours, 1.30, 2 a.m. for him. Just wouldn't have worked out. And uh, so we're going to, we're going to, we kept them fresh in order to do, and, and this is a very brief interview. It's only about seven or eight minutes long. The reason we're keeping it short is because we're going to do a much more in-depth interview as we get closer to the release of the game. So this, again, is meant to give you more of an introduction to the troubles by getting to now meet the designer uh, Hugh O'Donnell. So let's go to that interview now. Again, as promised, this is going to be an introduction for the Troubles, the Shadow War in Northern Ireland, 1964 to 1998. No better way to do that than with our pre-recorded session that we're going to be doing with our special guest, who's the designer of the Troubles, Hugh O'Donnell. So let's go ahead and welcome in Hugh now, right now to the stream. Hi, Hugh. How are you uh, doing today? Hi, John. Yep, yeah, absolutely fine. Good to great. Good we're to, good to hear from, to hear from you. <laughs> Sorry, I got some background noise here. I got some dogs. Uh, could you tell us where you're joining us from uh, today? Okay, I'm uh, live in Port Glasgow, uh, in Glasgow, Scotland. Nice sunny day. I can see the windows. Just the beam of light is this irradiating, coming through, radiating yeah. through. <laughs> yeah, take a, take a print screen, John. Uh, it's not often repeated. <laughs> well, it's, uh, often it's rain and yes. rain rain well let's do this i promised i'm gonna try to keep this to five minutes so this is meant to yeah, be no sort of a uh, elevator pitch about the troubles the game which we're excited at compass games to be announcing as our pre-order tonight again here's the cover uh mock-up of the cover if you will we're going to be getting the rest of the components finalized and uh just to let it, the audience know because we're not able to do live uh questions during this q a pre-recorded session is we'll definitely have you back on later to do like a 30 35 minute in-depth interview on the troubles along with donald haggerty the artist yep. uh, that's yep. worked with you on the game Fantastic. so we're going to keep it short and sweet today so let's do this let's focus on you let's do an introduction let everybody know a little bit more about who who o'donnell is your introduction to gaming and how you came about deciding to do a, a simulation particularly the topic of the troubles okay um i hate school i i am a teacher so that seems Went from hating school to now you're a teacher. Yeah, Makes perfect, perfect sense. Uh, yeah, the perfect paradox. But I've always loved reading. I've always read, uh, loved narrative and I still love narrative. Um, and shortly after teaching a few years, I took a master's degree at Edinburgh University. So it's Hugh O'Donnell, MSc. Um, and during, during a conference, my work was being shown um, up in Glasgow uh, with my, my uh, tutor, Hamish McLeod. After the presentation, we all went downstairs and we came across these board games. Now, I hadn't touched board games 
since Monopoly and, and Scrabble. And suddenly Paths of Glory and Advanced Squad Leader suddenly come through through my you know the postman's bringing what, them what up. What was your first exposure to like the war games? What, what, uh, what it, it, was, it was it was nine, it was two thousand and fifteen that this wow. new wonderful world opened up to me. Only a few and years, only yeah, a few only years, couple, and now you've already years. got this. I, 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 I don't, and I, I, you know, no, and I feel like a, a, a total interloper. But for me, it was the card-driven game element. You know, Pass of Glory. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. You looked at a distant plane, and you know, other other games that I could mention. But yeah, very, very yeah. quickly, what I thought is, okay, here's here are games that, you know, you play, you put down. But the games that really interested me were the ones that told a story. And I didn't go looking for, for the troubles. Uh, my wife, kept, you know, she's often saying to me, why did you pick that topic? And it isn't a cliche. I didn't pick that topic. It picked me. And coming from the West Coast of Scotland, we've been, we have been affected by... Um, sure aspects of the troubles so in 2019 i started reading and researching and two years later we have this beautifully and uh, an amazing quick study (laughs) that that well two years it was that's a quick quick, uh, you know 2015 no no clue about the hobby (laughs) existed no and then fast forward six years and then i think did you have professional education in simulations or uh, educational Um, designs i am well the masters was in a digital context where i had um i had pupils go online in a, a sort of a simulation a Mars Colony simulation, right at about their experiences, which were obviously virtual. Um, and from that, we were getting really, really magnificent pieces of imaginative writing with the elements of um, science content yeah. from this virtual study. So for me, for, get, for me, get this idea of narrative ran through both digital and the, the analog, the physical, uh, both those form, form factors. So as I said, the troubles, there was nothing out there. Perhaps there's good reason why. Um, so using my credentials as, as an academic, as a, as a, as a, yeah. a, a teacher, um, I just started work on this. I know or knew a, li- a little bit about the Troubles based right, on right. where I was from and from a yeah. r- religious upbringing. Um, yeah. And very, very quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah picked to you. Topic picked to you. And yeah, then I, 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 I must... I must say this, I've interviewed Thomas, uh, Thomas Sloff, who's the designer of this game that I'm going to show here on screen, Brotherhood and Unity. Uh, it's also a challenging topic. It's, I could see as a designer, it's a, it's a tough topic to grapple with because it is, uh, you know, modern day, it still has, it's still, uh-huh. those feelings are there. It still has impacts on you know, populace. And yeah. uh, Thomas Sloff, uh, the game title picked him. He, he's lived from the area, he's experienced things, and he wanted to do a study on uh, again learning uh, educational focus like you've said yeah. learning from uh learning from history learning uh, recent history the yeah. things that are happening and uh you know we went through the same experience i just want to tip my hat to you know that's something you know it's not the first time something like this has been done and of course brotherhood and unity has been out for some time and and thomas Sloff has been earning rave reviews for the insights that his study has provided his game has provided into yeah. a very tough time which of course the troubles is obviously a very uh, tough and dark challenging time so it's great uh, that you could bring light to it and um, I -hmm. promise I was going to try to keep this short so I've got to really pick a good last question here because we're already at the five or six minutes time but um, as people learn about the game and here's the product page and there's going to be more information and I'm amazed how you've done this in just a few years uh, introduction to the hobby you're really a quick study to do something this detailed to really cover all facets of the game as a simulation. I know it's for one to six players, a lot of, a lot of history in the game, so the card driven mechanics, et cetera. What's your, what's your elevator pitch takeaway that you would like to leave our audience with about the troubles? If they're wondering about the game, what, yeah. what most do you want to tell them about your game until we can meet again to yeah. do a more extensive interview? Okay. I was a programmer for 12 years before becoming an educator. So perhaps that, that other part of the brain helped. Pick up the troubles um, and what you'll find is that you will have a, a greater understanding. And for me, it's not just the four factions that everyone's familiar with, the RUC, the British forces, collectively known as the Crown Forces, nor is it the paramilitaries, the UVF and the, the other loyalist paramilitaries, nor is it the IRA. It's the nationalist and unionist politi- political elements that really add the flavour to this game. They're totally inextricably linked. And for me, that was the biggest um, 
that was the biggest takeaway from from this design. It was it was a political dimension that a lot of people don't see, and often that would often disregard um, and see as is is not is not a is not is not a subject um, fit for simulation. So for me, it's a political dimension. And what I'm going to do for everybody, uh, which I'm doing as part of the live interview broadcast uh, tonight, is I am sharing with everybody uh, a little brief history of the Troubles. Just to, uh, I did the same thing for another uh, designer interview that was around the uh, invasion or the uh, raid on Kabul, Afghanistan. I mean, maybe people don't have a lot of history at their fingertips, so we did a quick pr uh, pr primer, if you will, just a quick background, which this is. It's about five minutes long, but I think it's uh, helpful to give people context to what you're simulation studies what what's it, what the situation is studying so i am i am playing that uh, as part of the uh, broader based uh, broadcast for tonight again i'm sorry we couldn't do this live i know with the time change and everything and not being able to have donal on uh, who's the the artist of the game we'll have we'll have both of you on uh, at a later date when we're closer to the production of the game where we can show all the components that are being produced and we can go much deeper and most importantly we can take our viewer questions and i know they always have great questions for you as the designer uh, and there'll be a lot of them so we'll definitely I definitely plan to have you back uh, Hugh I want to thank you so much on behalf of Compass it's thank wonderful you. to work with you, you um, yes a challenging uh, timely topic for sure but um, people like you said they're gonna take away and learn a lot about uh, learn a lot about the history uh, of the troubles and uh, we know it's gonna also be a, a very good game much like Brotherhood and Unity has been rated as a very uh, good learning simulation as well. So uh, thanks again for your time Hugh. We're gonna have you back when we Thank have you, more John. time. Thank you for helping us introduce uh, the troubles to everybody tonight that we have Thank now you, on pre-order. Take, Take care. care. Bye bye. So I'm glad I was able to provide that uh, just a brief interview. I want to introduce you all to Hugh O'Donnell and again, I apologize we can do it live because of the time change. And when we get closer to the release of the game, we'll definitely look to do an earlier live session. It won't be in the evening uh, in uh, in North America. It's gonna it's gonna have to be uh, early afternoon for Hugh. Uh, to be able to join us to do a more in-depth uh, interview. So maybe it ends up being like a Saturday or a Sunday live interview. Just have to find the right timing where we can get the most people together uh, who like to do these live broadcasts. So again, uh, if you come to the, and I saw the comment about, the, there was a question about the shipping costs seem high. Um, if there's a misconfiguration in the order form, definitely try again later. It is a heavier it is a heavier box. It's, uh, as you'll see from the product page here, um, it's going to be a three inch thick box with heavy components, mounted map, lots of pieces. Uh, we've got a lot of information here for you about the game. So if you scroll and go through, um, Hugh's done a pretty good job here of giving you some more background about the topic uh, matter itself, more about the background of the game. Here's a shot of the uh, main game map. There's also a side display map of a Belfast area as well uh, that's included in the game. But it goes through a lot of the information, a lot of the different periods, as you can see here mentioned, again, on the product page, uh, looking at the, really focusing on the different factions. Just as an FYI, this game was redeveloped. It's not a coin-based game. So coin is something, obviously, uh, that's, uh, that's a series from G MT games, uh, but uh, this is not a, uh, a coin based system. It's a different system. Um, but of course, it looks very, uh, it probably looks very similar to you to things you've seen before uh, that have these types of components. Uh, so definitely check out the product information and you'll see there's a lot of components. I can't fit all the components. I'm actually having to scroll through all the components on the screen. There's a, uh, this is a full package. It's going to be a very heavy package as well. And again, as I uh, mentioned, with Hugh and, and uh, you know I saw a few comments here about oh you know the subject matter don't don't forget this isn't our first dance with uh, looking at recent studies and we really want to do a, a we really want to do from an educational standpoint study standpoint this is what we did and the designer Thomas Loft did with Brotherhood and Unity and uh, you know we we really uh, are excited uh, about the troubles and all the research uh, and that has gone into uh, this this new uh, pre-order title uh, again from 
Compass Games. Uh, also, you'll note there are some graphics. I'll be adding more graphics here, but I'll bring them up here just so you can see them. So here's a little bit of an overview. Again, card-driven system, over 260 uh, cards in the game. So Hugh mentioned during the interview, he's a big fan of uh, started with Pass the Glory, and I think it was 2015 when he discovered the hobby. And then he went through, if you caught that during the interview, he got uh, some professional education development in simulations. Uh, and education is a big part of his background. And actually, he's already shared with me the troubles, has got a pretty big footprint already in academia, uh, think tanks, etc. that he's been presenting that over the past year plus. So uh, a lot of academia is already aware of, uh, of Hugh's work here. And what we're doing is we're bringing it now commercially. We'll be bringing it commercially out. But it, you'll see some nice graphics here, hopefully. This is the main map for the troubles. As I mentioned, for Belfast, there's an 8.5 by 11 uh, map as well for that area so that's this area right here um, we'll add we'll be adding cards shortly i don't have any cards yet available and again there's 260 plus cards in the game there's also going to be all these different tokens and pieces and, and embossed uh, pieces as well that have their icons and markings on them that match the game that match the game cards uh, i believe it's five counter sheets five sheets of markers again all going to be deluxe uh, edition print printouts, you know, punch board uh, uh, counters, as you can see here. So we've got some stuff for you to look at there uh, about the game. So um, I'll definitely double check. Uh, somebody just commented they saw shipping uh, for Arkansas was uh, $15. So uh, not sure why there's a $50 charge for a different state here in the US. So we'll definitely uh, check out to make sure the configuration's right for the shipping. It should be working properly. But if somebody says it was $58 to ship to uh, a state here, that doesn't sound right for sure. So, uh, so again, we're really uh, excited about it. Now, if anybody's interested, I haven't done this in a while, but uh, I know some people uh, said uh, they'd like to do this again. So if you have any general comments or questions, uh, please feel free uh, to do that. Yeah, maybe it's one. Yeah, it's one hour shipping for fifty eight dollars. That's Henry's Henry on YouTube. You've nailed it. That's exactly what it is. You're absolutely right. But uh, we have just a little bit of time left. So if you have any uh, uh, comments you'd like to share, any questions about uh, Compass Games in general, I'll be happy to uh, take those uh, right now. Also, if you'd like to try to do the dial in again, I believe I have my system working here. I haven't had a chance to really. Uh, practice it much, but uh, it's basically like a radio uh, a radio prize uh, show when you uh, dial in. If I pick up, if uh, there are a lot of people dialed in the first time I did this, and uh, it's like one shot. And once I take that one call, that's the one that's going to come through. So if anybody uh, feels the need, they want to call in, and we can try to do a uh, bit of a talk show uh, approach to this. We can try and do that. I'll have my phone here on standby for anybody that wants to do that. What I'll do in the meantime is I'll go back to the comments just to see if there's any uh, closing comments here. So quick, everybody dial in. Don't all dial in at the same time. That would be uh, that would be a mess. And I always, I always get concerned that, uh, that Bill's going to be dialing in. So uh, that would make things interesting if that happened. But uh, yeah, we're happy to take any questions you want via comments or uh, via dial in. And if I can get it to work, uh, you know, I got lucky the first time, but uh, we're definitely able to do that for you. So again, we're just really excited to have uh, the troubles available. A lot of people have been asking about it. Uh, so we're definitely uh, going to be providing updates on it when we get closer to the release of the game. It will be sometime next year. Uh, we'll definitely have a more in-depth uh, interview uh, going on as well. Uh, so we covered the schedule today, obviously with Bill next week uh, for the town hall session. We'll be, I'm sure we'll be talking about the schedule from uh, Compass Games. I uh, know there's always questions about the schedule and certain games when they might be released. We talked about Death in the Trenches comes up a lot. And Bill's always mentioned how there's delays with that game. Uh, so uh, we'll get an update next week on Death in the Trenches. Bill definitely knows that it's the one title everybody's waiting for. I think that Death in the Trenches is the one game that I get the most questions about. So we're definitely going to be uh, keeping an eye out when Death in the Trenches will have a more formal uh, release date. And uh, Bill is staying on top of that status. So I know somebody was asking here, uh, as well as uh, from our website, when they uh, pro pro provided feedback, they did want to know what's the status on Death in the Trenches. So we'll keep our fingers crossed there. Also, want to let you know, um, if I switch back to our website just for a moment, uh, 
I uh, want to mention our expo. Uh, we're going to we're going to have an update on expo over the weekend. We actually had a, a bit of a jump in registrations, so it's going to be um, well, I should give you the date for the expo first. It's November 11th through the 15th. It's Veterans Day weekend in Meriden, Connecticut. Merit Meriden, Connecticut, and we're up to 46. I believe the number is 46 uh, registered attendees. So you'll you'll see that list here. So here we have uh, uh, sorted by last name, location. The email is provided so you can coordinate on games that you'd like to play with other attendees because we also have a game sign up list. So I was able to update the attendee list here that you can see. We have a few designers that have committed that will be joining us. We're also going to have some seminars. Uh, for the first time at Compass Expo. So we're looking forward to doing seminars. And what I will be doing is with the new folks that have signed up, I will be adding the new signups uh, that have come in from those that have registered in the past week or two. So this is not up to date. It was last on 8th of July. So it's, uh, it's over two weeks overdue, at least two weeks overdue. So I'll be updating it this weekend. Basically, if you see a blue highlight, that means uh, a first choice. There was a match for a first choice. And uh, that helps. Uh, that's an obvious, uh, easy way to get uh, to coordinate on game tables to be set up for that. If you see anything in green, uh, that means we've got people that are interested to play that game. Maybe they don't match up if it's their first uh, primary game interest or their second or third or fourth choice, but at least gives you an, uh, an idea as an attendee of who's interested in which games. And that's when you can go back to the uh, attendee roster and you can look up that email address and contact that person to try to coordinate on some games. So, and we'll have we'll have some tournaments. We'll do some uh, uh, game demonstrations, things of that nature as well. So, we'll definitely be uh, doing that uh, throughout uh, the expo. Uh, Connecticut's a great area. So, uh, I've been there. Haven't been there too often, just two or three times. But uh, November in Connecticut's actually a nice uh, time of the year. Um, yeah, somebody's asking about American Tank Ace and Combat Volume Two. Um, Combat Volume 2 uh, is just getting wrapped up, and American Tank Ace is wrapped up. So that game is wrapped up, and we're getting it ready to send it to the printers uh, end of this month in July. Uh, also, as Mo mentions, there's uh, uh, besides Compass Expo, there's also Dallas, Dallas Expo, which will be in March of next year. That will be our second time doing it. Typically, it's Constant World Expo, uh, which we have August uh, coming up here in August in uh, Tempe, Arizona. So American Tank Ace and Greg uh, Gregory Smith will be there, by the way, for American Tank Ace and all his other uh, titles. Imperial Tide will be released by then. He has another five or six titles in the works right now, one or two in particular that are, being, are now in artwork that we're working on. So we're excited about that as well. So again, uh, looking forward to uh, having some face-to-face -face, uh, time with everybody. And as always, uh, for our uh, event, uh, we have very special pricing for Compass Games Expo. So to thank everybody that can make it, we have at least 50% off pretty much all our uh, Compass products uh, that we have uh, in stock and available for sale. We'll have those there for great savings. So uh, we're really looking forward to being able to do that. So that being said, I think uh, you know, we, we uh, really want to focus uh, tonight's session on the troubles. We're so happy that we were able to, uh, to finally uh, get a chance to be able to do that uh, tonight. So uh, definitely check out the website uh, for more information uh, about the troubles. And uh, we won't worry about the dial-in for tonight. Uh, I don't think anybody's uh, dialed in, so we're going to let that go. Thanks for uh, consideration, though. We'll keep that open perhaps for another night. But again, uh, please join us uh, a week from tonight, next Thursday, and hopefully I'll get my camera uh, fixed again. Must be a button setting or something. But we'll uh, look forward to having everybody here uh, back again a week from uh, tonight. And uh, we'll do a general update of Compass Games and do the giveaways uh, as we do also uh, every uh, Thursday night for our town hall session. So we're looking forward to the town hall next week. And again, I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. And I uh, look forward to seeing you online and seeing you next Thursday with Bill Thomas uh, for our next town hall session. Good night, everybody. Take care and bye-bye.